Hello, my name is Ashton Johnson, and this is my church history project on a theologian that we really haven't heard about a lot from our lectures, but we have discussed in our readings and um, our text quite a few times. So it made me wonder who this name was. Um, and I'm talking about a, a gentleman by the name of Lanfranc. I don't know. I believe that's the right way to pronounce it, Lanfranc. And um, he was a well-known theologian, scholar, monk, and ultimately... He became um, the Archbishop of Canterbury for nearly 20 years under, um, um, under William the Conqueror. And, um, and so it's a pretty interesting story that I, I will um, go ahead and dive into. Um, he was born in the year 1010, 1010 AD, um, in a town called Pavia in northern Italy. Excuse me, in northern Italy. And, um, and he was a smart man. He was a smart man. He actually loved to learn. So he actually is known for a while as a traveling scholar. So we see that he traveled to Gaul, he studied at Taos, and he st uh, studied at Burgundy for a short period of time before ending up as a, um, in a monk lifestyle in Beck. He lived as a monk um, at one of the monasteries there for a while. Um, and, and a lot of people find that pretty interesting, actually. They find that interesting due to the fact that he didn't necessarily agree with some of the monastic lifestyles um, that that were seen there. We see, we know that monastic life was surrounded by the two things, work and prayer. Um, we see that they have their three hour, um, every three hours they have a prayer service. And we don't see that, um, that Lanfranc was eager about the work or the prayer side. But what we do see is that Lanfranc really loved to study. Um, and at, the, at his time there, at his time at the monastery, he developed a deep love for uh, theology and education where he continued to teach. Um, and he was just a very, very well-taught scholar. He ended up teaching many people um, across his time. He moved to Avranches for a period of time, which is on the western coast of, um, of modern day France, which was known as Normandy back then, um, where he continued to teach, where he continued to, um, to, to grow his knowledge and help people. Um, so they, while there, um, William, William Rufus appointed Lanfranc because he said, he said he wanted the most highly intelligent monk in Normandy. And here you have a gentleman who is kind of seen as possibly, um, Kind of seen as possibly arrogant, selfish, maybe a little bit of, of both, honestly. Um, but he was appointed as um, as an Archbishop of Normandy, and and for a while, Lanfranc decided he did not want that. Even other people, even other bishops in the area, thought that he should not have this role because he was just a scholar. He was just a monk, a theologian that had kind of traveled around and didn't really show in his life that, that that was what he needed to do. But he was appointed and he accepted William's call, King William's call to be the Archbishop of, um, of, of um, Canterbury. And, and he decided that that was what he was gonna do. Um, it, it's interesting because it, it, he says that he focuses solely on his one church that he was given while both aiding um, other people around him. Um, some would say that he restored knowledge of arts to the West. He was a counselor to other monks. Um, and, and we see that, that this man, although not necessarily qualified for the job, ended up having the perfect qualifications by being a scholar, well-versed in education. He lived a monastic lifestyle. So as an archbishop, he was able to, to help his, um, his, the monks underneath him, the monks that were maybe serving in the areas around him. And as an archbishop, he became um, maybe a liaison to to some of the the military or more of the um, political side of things that William would need him to do. So we find this very interesting um, that Lanfranc studied so much, was a well taught scholar, became a monk, and then ultimately became the archbishop of Canterbury. As seen here in the stained glass at St. Dustin's in Canterbury. Lanfranc is still highly embellished and with a book in his left hand, which just continues to prove the point how smart he was and his desire to continue to be educated.
As we look at another picture of Lanfranc, we know that um, King William the Conqueror, his job, he wanted to um, to defeat the Normans. He wanted to keep Normans out of England. So Lanfranc aided with him in that. But Lanfranc's sole role as archbishop was to help monks um, keep simony and keep celibacy as they defended their roles. So that was his one of his main goals as archbishop until he asked to be removed of his role and passed away in the year of 189. So as we see, Lanfranc had a very interesting career as archbishop, as a monk, as a scholar. And in closing, um, I would like to read a, a quote I read from an article titled, A View of Archbishop Lanfranc by Frank Barlow. He says, he was a father and counselor of the monks in England. He was the old binder at Royal Cart. He, was, he restored knowledge of the arts in Latin West. And I would suggest Lanfranc was a man who had become tame. I think that's very interesting to close with because we see a, a man who was very scholarly, very talented educationally, a wise teacher. He actually asked his, his um, pupils to praise him when, um, when, whenever they could. Um, but we see that, that um, uh, Professor Barlow encourages that maybe Lanfranc had become a man who had become tamed. He went from being a, a wise scholar, a great teacher, to someone who is, is more of a caring leader to the church that embodied that period of time.